can we also solve differential equations if higher derivatives are involved? And do we need to? Well, let us start with the second question with the following example. If you have a mass attached to a string, then its acceleration is a given in terms of its displacement due to Hooke's law. But acceleration is a second derivative of the displacement, so we already have a first example of a problem that requires a second order differential equation. And a lot of objects are modeled as springs. So how does such an equation look like in general? And more importantly, how does its solution look like? Well, that is what you will learn in this video. Well, a linear second order differential equation is a differential equation of the following form, right here. So, what does it make second order? Well, we give a second derivative as higher deri highest derivative. And what does it make? Uh, linear? Well, the fact that y double, y prime, and y are only linear in the equation. p of x, g q of x, and r of x may be any function of x. So there is no restriction on how x is in the differential equation, but the dependent variable, the y, has to be linear in the equation. That makes the differential equation linear. And one more name, it is right-hand side g of x equals zero, then the differential equation is called homogeneous. So let's look at a few examples. First one, x squared y double plus y prime times cosine x plus e to the power x times y equals to x plus five. Is this linear or not? Well, it looks horrible. Because in this case, our p would be x squared, our q of x would be cosine x, and our r of x would be e to the power x, and the right hand side g of x equals 2x plus 5. So, in fact, this one is linear. Then the next one looks much nicer, looks kind of linear. y double is fine. But then you have y times y prime. So, uh, this term makes this equation not linear because then you would have to take, for example, q of x equals y, but that's not possible because q of x may only depend on x and not on y. So this one is not linear. Then uh, 2y prime plus 3 times y equals 4. Uh, this equation uh, is linear because you have q of x equals 2 and r of x equals 3, and the right hand side equals 4. However, it's not second order because the highest derivative is y prime and not y double. And uh, the last one, 4, y double plus y equals 0. So we would have p of x equals 1, r of x equals 1, and g of x equals 0. And then q of x equals uh, uh, 0, uh, which is uh, fine, uh, because the highest derivative is still y double. So we have here a second order a linear differential equation. So now we know how to recognize a second order differential linear differential equation, but how does the solution look like? Well, for that we have two, th two theorems. So we just look in the other theorem, how does the solution look like? What are we looking for? We are not going to solve the differential equation yet. So what are we looking for? Well, suppose you have a homogeneous differential equation, so the right hand side equals zero. And suppose you find y1 and y2, uh, two independent solutions. Where independent means the independent in the linear algebra sen sense. Uh, which in this case means because you have only two functions that they are not a scalar multiple of each other. So if you have the two independent solutions, then uh, C1Y1 plus C2Y2 is a solution of the differential equation as well. That's the first theory. So if you manage to find two independent solutions, a linear combination of the two, is a, uh, of the two solutions is a, a new solution. But can you find more? Well, no. That's what theory tells us. Uh, suppose you have two independent solutions and this p of x is not equal to zero, technical uh, condition, and then the general solution is your whole solution is given by a linear combination of those two, so we can find more solutions. Well, the proof of theorem 2 uh, is quite mathematical, so it's beyond the scope of this course. Uh, however, the proof of theorem 1 is a bit easier. How can you see that c1 y1 plus c2 y2 is a solution to if y1 and y2 are solutions. Well, just plug it in into your homogeneous differential equation. You know uh, that y1 and y2 are solutions of your differential equation. So if you plug in your 
c1 y1 plus c2 y2 into the differential equation you get the p time choice solution plus q time choice solution prime this uh, should be r times the solution and then just take uh, all uh, times of the c1 first so you get here p times c1 times y1 double so that's this one and here q times c1 times y1 prime comes here and here should be r times c1 times y1 comes here okay and then you take everything in the c2s so p times c2 times y double comes here a q times c2 times y2 prime comes here and a r times c2 times y2 comes over there and then you see that you have c1 times zero because this is a solution of the diff homogeneous differential equation plus c2 times zero because that's a solution of the homogeneous differential equation as well so you get c1 times zero plus c2 times zero equals zero so you see if you have two independent solutions of your differential equation then the linear combination is a solution too that's what uh, theorem uh, one says and theorem two if you didn't prove that's a bit harder if you have uh, two independent solutions for your homogeneous second or a linear differential equation then that's all then you have your general solution c1 y1 plus c2 y2 so if you're trying to solve a linear second or a differential equation you are in fact looking for two independent solutions